Ladies and gentlemen, Tomb Raider 426 Remastered is coming out on the 14th of February 2025 and coming to all platforms. PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, the Xboxes and PC. Once again, a 10% discount exists for those who pre-order with the Steam version in Australia costing 40 Australian dollars AUD and that comes to $27 USD. The games are Tomb Raider The Last Revelation, Tomb Raider Chronicles and Tomb Raider The Angel of Darkness. Once again, the talented developers of Aspire are bringing this remastered collection to the world. These guys are keeping me real busy these days. We have already covered the Soul Reaver Remastered, Star Wars Jedi Power Battles, and now this. Just like my previous videos on these remasters, we will compare the graphics between the old and the new. We will go over what new gameplay features have been confirmed and what to expect from the games themselves. Let's be excited from start to finish and be sure to leave a like on the video so others know you got the good stuff here. Okay, we are done with the intro, let's start things off with some smexy graphics pervin and randomly throughout the entire video I'll drop extra bits of information I have collected across the internet. So be sure to watch the whole thing, otherwise you will miss out on features. Alrighty dighty then, okay so let's first have a look at this train scene. The clip shows the before and after so fast, you might think things simply got darker and while you are right, there is also a lot going on in terms of visual improvements and I want to point them all out for you. Looking back at the mountains and the geometry at the side, they have completely been changed and remodeled. The size and structure right out the window and a new vision implemented. There's also brand new textures used which makes things look even better. There are dirt particles have been added as well for greater atmosphere but also bunches of grass that is completely new. These are small details but stops the world feeling flat and barren. The old train has also been thrown in the trash and we have a new model again with once again new textures as well. While it may be easy to assume these remasters are just high resolution textures, the fact is the team goes out of their way to redo as much as possible and that will become extra clear as we proceed. Oh, and how about I hit you with your first random fact in terms of new gameplay. So allow me to read a quote for the last revelation and I quote, for dedicated fans, the level design brings bigger challenges, more intricate puzzles, and for the first time, the ability to rope swing. See, I really like the sound of that, and I hope you do as well. Level design has been tweaked to give you more variety. Adjustments to puzzles have also been done, and the big one, rope swing. I am sure the team will make creative use of that feature. Did you also know the game will come with a photo mode? That's right, pause the action at any time and zoom right in to take some action snaps. Choose your facial expressions and even different poses. Put different guns and weapons in your hands and even change what outfit you are wearing. As a self-confessed graphics pervert who spends more time looking at pretty water graphics and effects and fires and forgets to play the darn games, <laughs> Features like this are very welcome. Okay, onwards to the next comparison screenshots. So here we have an indoor scene which also shows a number of changes. Previously, you had a ramp instead of stairs at the side, but now actual stairs exist. The fire burning on the torches have also been completely redone. This is not adding resolution to a texture or effect, but a new job completely, so the fire looks better, has been built from scratch. The statues have also been completely remodeled, as well as the mummy thing in the middle. They clearly try to make everything look the same at a glance, but when you compare any scene in this game, it's crystal clear almost everything gets some loving care. My only critique for this particular area and screenshot is, I wonder if there is too much light. 
previously, only the fire lit the area and showed the surrounding environment, and the distance was a believable black, because there was no other light sources and you're in a tomb or whatever. In the newer version, you can clearly see what's going on around you, and I wonder if the illusion of those flames lighting the area has been lost in the process. Anyway, back to random game info and features I have learned. Some key features that have been confirmed is the ability to toggle between the old and new graphics whenever you want. Awesome, that is fantastic. You will also have access to the classic tank controls you are familiar with, but also have access to the more modern controls if you prefer. We expected this, they did it last time, and I'm glad to see it here again. Another thing that has been added, and I'm actually grateful for this, is boss health bars. Previously, you had no health indicator when fighting bosses, and this was something that was pretty common during this time for a lot of games, and I always hated it. Hated it with a passion. Mostly because sometimes a boss would only take damage by a specific weapon or environment prop. Now, if you can't see the health, you have no idea if what you are doing is actually causing damage or not, and there were plenty of games where I would be attacking with a chosen weapon for ages, and I couldn't tell the difference if the boss just had a lot of health, or if I was doing nothing at all, if I was doing something wrong. So this is a very welcomed feature. Hey, guess what? These games will also be adding more than 150 plus trophies for you to collect. That's a pretty sweet deal. I know people who love trophies would love to hear that. You have more than 150 to track down and some of them are apparently pretty darn fun to try and get. Alrighty, still more features to discuss but let's return to the graphics comparison just a bit more. Hello, hello everybody. Hope you have been enjoying the video so far. This is just my usual reminder that if, like me, you feel video games are about escapism and not activism, please, please hit subscribe right now to empower voices like mine who put the actual games first. Thank you so much for hearing me out, and uh, let's proceed with the video. There's still a lot of cool features to go over. This bridge scene is pretty impressive with just how much has changed. Firstly, that new statue is not the old statue. That's not a complaint, mind you, it's just that much different. The 3D model and texture is better in every single way. It actually looks pretty darn nice, and there is a respected feeling here to know the team has put so much more work than needed. Let's be honest, they could have slapped a better texture on and caught it a day, but no. Someone worked on this made a completely new model, did completely new texture work, bricks in the distance have been improved as well, and we also have dust particles in the air. The torch holding the flame has been completely remodeled as well, and looks a lot better than previously. Now let's jump to Tomb Raider Chronicles for some new game features, and once again, I quote, New gameplay mechanics like stealth and tightrope balancing are sure to keep newcomers and seasoned players on their toes. Now this sounds very interesting. Stealth is considered a new gameplay mechanic? I have not played the original and I wonder what does this mean? Can we push our backs against the walls or perhaps enemy AI has been improved where it was impossible to sneak past or surprise them, but now we can, I guess. Also, what is this tightrope balancing that they speak of as well? This sounds like completely new gameplay sections that have been added because these things need to go somewhere. These could all be legacy features as well that did not make the original games, and now it's their chance to shine. That sounds pretty darn cool that they're adding new features to the different Tomb Raider games. And of course, if they add new features, they need to change the game to a certain extent to add it. If stealth didn't exist before and we're adding it now, there needs to be stealth elements. If we can swing on a rope, which was confirmed earlier with the other game, okay, where are the rope sections going to be? Where you can swing, where is this tight rope? Like, there's a lot to look forward to here. And I have to say, when fugly versions like these of Lara Croft exist and are official, right? 
this, this isn't hate art or anything, or I don't even know if that's a term, but thank goodness we have these remasters where Lara Croft looks like herself. Legacy IPs need to be respected, and this is a rare treat here. Tomb Raider in this bundle looks exactly how she should. Look at these promo posters, for example. Literal side by side to show us that Aspire look at original materials and try to respect it as much as possible. They are not recreating Lara in their vision, but who and what she has always been. A sexy badass who is here to take us all on an adventure, and I am here for it. Oh, and thank you so much for those of you who want to support an old school gamer like me, who will never lecture and talk down to you. I will always put the games first. If you always put the games first, we're going to get along just fine. God bless you all, take care, and I'll see you all for the next video. Bye-bye.